Good morning, Quinn, to our wonderful pastor, Pastor Wright, our awesome clergy staff, congregation, visitors, and friends. I say greetings 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone say petrified. petrified. That's what I am right now. <laughs> so let us pray. God, please remove all fear and doubt so that the people under the sound of my voice will receive a word from you. Decrease in me so that people will always see Christ in what I say and do. Amen. Amen. Before I officially begin my message, I would like to acknowledge my loving and supportive family. In 2006, my son Carson and I joined Quinn Chapel. In 2008, my mom left her church after nearly 40 years to join the Quinn Chapel family along with me. Later that year, Larry came and brought his daughter and Camille. And then in 2011, we brought the Turney twins, Layla and Lennox. They are all with us here today. And for the sake of even having church, of course, the twins are in daycare right now. So we started out as a family of two members at Quinn, and we are now a family of seven members at Quinn. I feel that I have single-handedly contributed to the church's population, so you're welcome. <laughs> also visiting with us today are my in-laws, my Aunt Sandra, and my dad, and I'm working on them too. So would my family please stand? Thank you. There is a story that got me to stand before you today, and so I brought along Miss Shaw to help me with my story. On February 13th, my mom was admitted to Good Sam Hospital for kidney failure. After I spent the evening visiting with her, and as I was leaving, I saw a mural on the wall that read the 121st chapter of Psalm, verse one through two. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help come from the Lord. Little did I know that I was going to recite that scripture several times over the next week. The next day, Valentine's Day, I was at the grocery store battling the crowd, of course, to buy my mom some flowers. And I received a call from Quinn Chapel to check up on my mom. At the end of the call, I was asked, or told, however you would like to see it, that I would be the speaker for the Youth Sunday. While my initial emotion was shock, and I danced around giving a response by mumbling and sighing into the phone, I finally said yes, and here's why. Young people, I know that I have a gift of public speaking. I know that I have a passion for working with youth. Pastor Wright knows that I have this gift as well. But most importantly, God knows that I have this gift and he blessed me with it and so he wants me to use it. Therefore, today's message is when your gift will not let you rest. I'm going to focus on the three phases of using your gift. Shock, fear, and preparation. So as I thought about what I was going to speak about today, my first question was how was I going to speak? I thought of coming up here and saying, I will lift up mine eyes onto the hills. But then I thought, wait a minute, that's a little too much like Reverend JT. <laughs> so then I said, let me try to ease it back and use a little softer and sweeter voice. So then I said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. And then I said, oh, wait a minute, that's too much like Sister Wright. I can't do that either. <laughs> so then I said, you know what? I'm going to use the best voice that God gave me. I'm going to use my educator voice, my principal voice, and for my children, my mama voice. So in my moment of shock, I said to myself,
Sometimes, young people, your gift will shock you. You will doubt yourself. You will question what others see in you. And you may even wonder, why me? Why was I chosen to have this gift? But in the end, you must lift up your eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. Your help come from the Lord. And so with that, my gift that God has blessed you with, he's going to see you through it. He's going to do a great work in you, and he's going to complete the work that he started. In short, young people, he's not going to leave you hanging. His word says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. The next phase of not letting your gift rest is fear. I can honestly tell you that my first level of fear was thinking about the blank stares as well as the head turns when I got up here as opposed to Pastor Wright. As a matter of fact, my one hus my husband's, not my one husband, my husband's <laughs> one pointer was that if it started to go bad up here, that I should start jumping around and saying, hey, 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 in my best Pastor Wright impression. <laughs> Because in my husband's mind, that always gets the congregation fired up. <laughs> so if I start saying, hey, 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 then you will know why. <laughs> During the fear phase, I also went through the I'm going to back out phase. You know how we like to make excuses to avoid using our gifts. I thought of calling back and saying, Oh, well, you know, I'm going to the hairdresser on Sunday, so I'm sorry I can't make it. Knowing good and well that every black hairdresser is closed on Sundays. <laughs> then I thought of saying, well, you know, my husband, he's a big man, and he likes a big Sunday dinner, and so I have to stay home and make sure that it's just right, knowing that that would be a poor excuse as well. I even considered swapping one gift for another, because dancing is my passion, and the liturgical dancers were to dance today, and I didn't, of course, want to miss that. But sometimes God has to pull you from one gift in order to cultivate another. So I made up all those raggedy excuses not to use my gift today. But one thing I've learned over the years is not to get tired and not to grow weary with working for the Lord. And sometimes I have to say to myself, I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy and I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me no I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me Amen. that's right I don't believe that God has brought me this far to leave me therefore I must continue to develop my gift and not let it die. Because God is so faithful, the least we can do is repay him for his faithfulness by giving our gifts unto him. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. The final 
and most important phase of not letting your gift rest is preparation. It is in this phase, young people, that I want you to remember that if God before you, who can be against you? So what do you need to do to prepare your gift? You must work at it. You must shape it, mold it, revise it, refine it, and don't let it rest until it reaches your best. The Bible gives us numerous examples of God giving gifts, but we have some gifts possessed by our young people right here at Quinn Chapel. Carson, stand up. Carson, my son, is an avid reader and writer. He loves WWE. Carson wants to grow up to, be a, to become a WWE script writer. Carson, my son, don't let your gift rest. Lexi, stand up. Yes, you, Lexi. <laughs> Lexi is a beautiful singer. She also plays several instruments. Lexi, don't let your gifts rest. Nia, stand up. Nia is a well-trained dancer and a very bright student. Nia, don't let your gifts rest. Michael Smith, stand up. Michael is a talented student and has served on various leadership positions. Michael, please don't let your gift rest. Camille, stand up. Camille, my daughter, is a great softball player and she enjoys singing. Camille, don't let your gifts rest. And of course, I can go on and on with naming numerous youth in our church. Young people, if Martin Luther King Jr. allowed his gifts to rest, where would we be today? What about Harriet Tubman or Dr. Charles Drew or Oprah Winfrey or Barack and Michelle Obama? Where would we be as a race of people if they allowed their gifts to rest? Yet, they have been a beacon of light and hope so that we may cultivate our own gifts. Their gifts did not allow them to rest, so why should you? Young people all around the building, please stand up. Listen, you are the light of the world, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can't let your gifts rest. We're depending on you to be the future of black history. Don't let us down. Don't be bullied, don't be dismayed, and don't let negative people take you away from God's purpose over your life. Thank you, you may be seated. Let's give them a hand, please. <laughs> to conclude, remember 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. Never let your gift rest. Pastor Wright, thank you for this opportunity to speak this morning, and thank you for not allowing my gift to rest. Amen. Amen.